Hello and a very warm welcome to all my viewers from around the world. The sun is shining and the magpie is casting. Coming at you guys today with another 1v1 replay. Sporting in the north, playing as the Wehrmacht, we have OMG Pop, who I might just call Pop, because saying OMG is quite a mouthful every time. While sporting in the south, playing as the new UK forces, we have Quinn Scruffy. Uh, so, uh, the map today is Crossing in the Woods. Uh, I imagine that anyone who's played the game is probably quite familiar with this map by now. It's been in the game for some time. One of my favourites, uh, I know I often say that, but uh, this one is actually probably my favourite map in the game at the moment. It's just, uh, there are no, no real spawn bias whatsoever. Both sides pretty much get a fair crack at the game. And uh, it's one of these maps which provides, I think, some quite interesting battles. There's a lot of opportunities for control and flanking, and uh, also there's no particularly dominant buildings, which... Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just because I play over command a lot at the moment, but if there's a particularly dominant building on the map, I just, uh, I don't know, to me it feels like it warps the game a little bit too much. So, uh, let's uh, let's uh, have a quick look at the initial build order here. We've got an early sniper, second unit purchased here for OMG Pop, uh, who I'm, I'm literally, yeah, I'm going to call Pop. Um, and uh, for Quinn Scruffy here, uh, we've got two units of uh, Tommies, uh, so he's gone one Tommy and one Vickers. So we'll see how these forces are going to match up. I've heard that I've heard that it's quite popular these days for uh, Vermac forces to go for a lot of snipers and mortars against the Brits. I've heard that the Brits at the moment are having a hard time dealing with that. So we'll see if that's going to be the approach for OMG Pop. He's sort of started off looking like it might be, so let's keep our eye out for that one. <coughs> Tommy's here grabbing the right-hand capture point and chalking off the first three points, four points of the scoreline. Second squad of Grenadiers coming out for, um, for Pop and... Uh, Seems like a pretty pretty standard standard build so far, then. These Tommies here using their uh, rate of fire advantage as they are in heavy cover. Vickers machine gun is uh, going to take the middle of the map just now. It's probably going to push up in just a second. Here we go. Zimija, the Vermax sniper. Heading down the left flank, he's going to run into a band of Tommies. And uh, he's probably going to start taking some shots. If we just uh, turn on the fog of war. There we go. And, uh, that's the first headshot there for the major, immediately causing the fallback there from those Tommies. And uh, I'd love to see, uh, I'd love to see Pop just grab this uh, fuel point quick time. That would be really nice. Just or even grab this point, which would take less time to grab and would cut the fuel point off. Actually, that's probably the clever decision. But a Bren carrier coming onto the left flank. Quite a good ca uh, counter for the sniper, and it is gonna, is it gonna see the sniper? To take one of our no, maybe not. So I think uh, I think Pop's just going to trade for a little bit of damage and just decap this point. The uh, carrier doing good damage. Oh no, Pop, you're not actually in that sector. And here comes some Grenadiers. They're going to try and get the flank off on this carrier, try and get a Faust in there. But Quinn is... Uh, Quinn's awareness is good enough and he manages to get that out. Uh, so, it seems that Pop has actually chosen the Assault Grenadier Doctrine. Uh, he hasn't actually opted to deploy any Assault Grenadiers at this moment, but he will have access to the Mechanized Assault Group. And, uh, hang on, we'll just uh, take, a, take a peek at this battle. Tommy's going to move into cover, get their rate of fire advantage. Grenadiers are in heavy cover, though, and uh, able to do decent damage. But it seems like this is a fight with four models to three that the Tommies are going to win even with the Grenadiers epic accuracy. <gasps> Meanwhile, the uh, Vickers is getting uh, whittled down to just a single man, and the uh, Bren Carrier uh, kind of making a trip here through mid, so... Seems like, uh, seems like Quinn's advances on the left flank, consisting of the Vickers, the Bren, and a squad of Tommies, are actually going to be deflected. <clears throat> and these Grenadiers not even having to fall back. Did they win that fight? Oh, well. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Three Grenadiers in heavy cover will beat four Tommies in medium cover um, at, at fairly close range. And this is what I was saying. I just have Down this feeling that for a squad us. that costs 280 manpower, uh, they're just, I, I just think Tommies are underperforming. I think they either need to cost 240 or they need, um, I don't know. They just need some kind of help because I just, I, it, I, they just seem like a little bit of a soggy unit, if I'm honest. Anyway, the Wasp Flamethrower upgrade has been purchased for the Universal Carrier, and this is the first time I've actually ever seen it in action, so this will be quite interesting. Royal Engineers making a run at these uh, Grenadiers, and I imagine at this range they should be able to displace them. 
Oh my goodness, Grenadiers, I mean, they've already got them down to two men. Ah, oh, they're actually even trading. Oh my goodness, with the Major and the... That is quite a setback at this early stage. At least he gets the counter squad wipe with the Wasp play for it. I mean, wow. But a Panzerfaust gets off into the brain carrier, leaving it with an engine damage, and it, it is kind of exposed here. Uh, it appears to be repairing. Crew repair. Huh, so it seems that the brain carrier is actually just able to repair. Now order new armored cars That's pretty cool. Is that like it's one star? Yeah, so a one star veteran seat can fix this up. That is awesome. How many munitions does that cost? Just 15 in total bargain. Lovely. Oh no, it's the major caught out in the open. Brain carrier is going to go for a run here. Well, oh, range on that wasp. It's quite extreme. <coughs> As uh, a vicar's getting into position in a nice point, a nice position on the right flank, and uh, map control pretty much has fallen to Quinn at this moment. Um, I think getting the counter squad wipe on the grenadiers here was a, a, a nice swing, really, for Quinn. I mean, he's down to three squads against the four of his opponents, but he does have the Bren carrier, and yeah, he got that grenadier squad wipe to sort of uh, just pay back for losing his uh, Royal Engineers. The Axis forces fanning out from their base, going for a bit of a land grab. Nothing too drastic going on right now. The so Major did make it out, as did the Grenadiers that fell back with him, and a 222 scout car. Zweihundert, Zwei and Zwanze, she's going to be the choice here. And I think that'll be an effective counter, I would imagine, for the uh, <coughs> Wasp-equipped Universal Carrier. Uh, I mean, we'll see how that goes. I don't imagine that the Wasp flamethrower will trouble the scout car. And I think that the uh, 222 auto cannon will be good point. enough. He just needs a uh, line of sight on this Bren. He doesn't actually know where it is at the moment. He'll see it shortly. The sniper reveals himself, and that should lure the Bren out. Oh, and the 222 coming from the rear. Quite a nice move here. I like this. Doing good damage. Yeah, that auto cannon. Nice. Nice. And that is a dead Bren. That is 90 munitions. How much does the Bren cost apart from the 90 munitions? One of our universal carriers has been destroyed. Let me just check. 15 fuel, 210 manpower. Enemy threatening a capture and that has vetted up the uh, the 222 straight off the bat. Oh, and it's going to go for a pursuit. Oh, and get a squad wipe on those Royal Engineers. The, enemy have destroyed the, the an forces engineer of Quinn section. are now perilously depleted. He's got the AEC-10 though, and this will be a nice counter to the scout car. So I like this. Opting to uh, choose the requisition option for the AEC-10. So what, this is basically a, a slightly more durable and slower Puma. Uh, is like the impression I got. I managed to use one in a couple of games. And the Puma is one of my favorite units, so I found the micro uh, pretty natural, and I, I do enjoy using the AEC-10. Seems like a really good unit. Uh, although with engine damage and down at about sort of half health, he probably wants to get it out of uh, here. This is, this is dangerous. Where are we going? To take a point from us. Uh, I'm not sure about this. You're, you're just cruising for a Faust in there, buddy. <coughs> and here has, comes the Faust. Pow! And that is now an AEC, which is in danger. Ah, sorry about that. My mobile telecommunications device proving a distraction as it's uh, vibrating away. Anyway, um... Uh, so we've got the Major, who's now up to how many kills? 11, and already nearly one and a half ranks of veterancy, and that really speaks about how much, uh, how much uh, the uh, Tommy infantry counts for veterancy. And the AC-10 getting hunted down in the corner, a sad and dejected death there. I, I think that, that was just a massive overextension. I think with the engine damage when it was sat here at half health, the correct option was just to withdraw it to your base. Okay, sure, he doesn't have Royal Engineers to repair it yet, but it's better than just hanging it out to dry. And the AC-10 costs something like, I don't know, 60 fuel, 70 fuel, something like that. Let me just check. Up, 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 60 fuel, 340 manpower. That's not a cheap toy. And certainly not at this stage point. of the game. We're only just coming up to the nine minute mark, so. Ah, sorry, they're just sipping on some tea. So I don't really think that Quinn should have sent that AAC out. Um, and especially if you look at the map, it's not like he's desperate. He's been doing quite well, I think. Especially given the early squad wipes he suffered. Anyway, a uh, slightly prophylactic pack gun coming out, or maybe that was built when the AC was still alive, so this will be a, a useful uh, anti tank tool moving on. We've got the uh, 251's uh, half track is being constructed for Pop, and uh, another brand carrier, I believe, is the choice for Quinn, who's uh, running low on manpower and uh, doesn't have a lot of fuel banked. <coughs> so we'll see what this Bren is going to be for. Quinn still has the flexibility of being able to choose a commander, so we'll see if he can. Uh, make anything of that. Two units of Tommies pushing up through mid. Grenadiers in cover and this sniper should be able to kite them quite nicely. There's another squad of Grenadiers, this time with LMG-42 coming in. Pat Gun's going to brush this Bren aside. And now we've got our first decent skirmish with a few units from each side happening. The uh, 251 arriving just in the nick of time to reinforce this unit. And he needs to restart reinforcing it now. Come on, Pop. Come on. 
Uh, I'd really like to see him start reinforcing that. And uh, the pack gun's just going to withdraw. I'm not sure why Enemy he's withdrawing so hard. To take one of our points. There is a Vickers deployed, but he can counter that to a, quite an extent with the sniper. So, okay, yeah, I see. Fair enough. So he wants to withdraw to here, hold this position, ping down the Vickers with the sniper, and then come back in. Yeah, sure. It's not a fight you want to take with the Vickers hammering you. That's 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 fair enough. Squad of Tommies on the left flank, making use of the heavy cover, pushing back some Grenadiers who, uh, who were in that area of the ready map. They're going to grab the fuel point, which is going to be uh, absolutely vital at the moment for Quinn, who uh, needs all the fuel he can get his hands on. And uh, I'll go and check the, the Vermac teching in just a second. Um, let see, where's the sniper? Oh yeah, so the sniper now up to two stars, that's going to give him the rate of fire increase. Pinging down this Vickers team, which wants to get out, and it does. Let's see if the Major manages to ping off one more of them. Yep, oh, they has it got Jummy! And, uh... Let's see, so Escalate to Battle Phase 2 has not been selected yet. I think, unit is ready I think for it will be shortly. Uh, obviously the Life of the Mechanized Company has There's been constructed, as we can tell by the fact that there are pack guns and 251 half-tracks out. <coughs> Map control at the moment, just slightly in favour of the Wehrmacht. Ah, oh, getting this crucial point, and I really like this, because if you look at the mini-maps, you're getting this point here, that cuts the road off here, so that actually is denying resource from three points, one of which is a fuel point. So. That's going to be uh, a real frustration there. And generally when I play this map, I prioritize trying to hold this area outside my opponent's base, or, or if I can, just make a dive and decap that point every so often, whenever I think I can with a, with a unit. Squad of Pioneers getting uh, destroyed on the right flank here. The Tommy's able to take care of them. Some slight inattention there from Pop, um, but it happens to everybody from time to time. And if you're going to lose a squad through inattention, Pioneer's probably the best way to do so. It's a major, now up to 19 headshots, and crack a in his way up to 3 star veterans. So these Grenadiers are in good positions here to use their LMG 42s to good effect. Even the 251 half track able to chip in some damage here with its MG 42. Or is it a 34? Um, I could probably check that. That is an MG 42. Are ready to create this pack gun is in a really dominant position as well. The Bren gun would love to do something. Sorry, the Bren carrier would love to do something, but. Um, I don't think it will. What does this icon floating above it mean? Oh, I'm so not down with all the new stuff that's going on in this game yet. <laughs> anyway, the pack 40 demonstrating its superior positioning, able to force that branded carrier back uh, with minimal effort, a single round. <coughs> Firing for good effect. This squad of Tommies on the right flank, they are dormant right now. I'd love to see them just grab a few more points and start chewing in because there's nothing to oppose them actually. There's like two, three points that they can go and be really irritating and grab. That's just the kind of thing where if you're just active with those units, there we go, Quinn's on top of it, here he comes. Also, he could um, use their medical ability just to take care of the rest of their health. This is one thing I've noticed, when you're playing as the UK forces, you really need to have that sense of timing down. It's like as soon as your Tommies with the medical upgrade are not in combat, you just hit that H button. Hey, it recharges in 30 seconds, and um, every little bit of health makes a difference in the fight. So I'd love to see him just, just bash the H button on that one. It's not like there's any ne nearby forces that he can help uh, heal. Ah, that's what that icon is. So this icon above this um, brain carrier, he's chosen to go for the Royal Engineer Regiment and he can designate any vehicle he chooses for the cost of 75 munitions as his command vehicle. And that is what Quinn has done here. So it slows the vehicle down, makes it a little bit less effective in combat, but it allows it to call in an infinite stream of reconnaissance planes. And um, that is what we can hear and see on the minimap flying around. Uh, seems like uh, seems like uh, Pop has decided to focus some of his attention to claiming the right-hand side of the map. He's going to come across here, grab this munitions point, grab a couple of other points, perhaps. We've got a little scuffle emerging in mid, and there's a good number of forces for both teams here. A uh, six-pounder gun coming up from the Brits, facing off against uh, the uh, Pack 40. So both of these guns appear to have the same arc and range. I think possibly the Pack gun is slightly wider out. No, I don't think so. No, they're the same arc. But Vickers gun in cover here is going to be doing really good work, suppressing a number of scores. These are very damaged. The sniper at the back is kind of plinking him down though. And that's a sniper who really needs a medical kit used from uh, one of these grenadiers. I mean, it costs what, 20 munitions or something? Yeah. It's for the cost of 20 munitions to heal a sniper, that's a deal, I'd take that. He also needs to reinforce these units, and he is doing that. Good, good, good. Uh, clearly, Pop, uh, quite a, um, a seasoned 251 half track user. I'm liking what I'm seeing from him. I'd love to see him still just use the medical ability on this uh, on this sniper, who's quite quite wounded. Up to four grenadier squads, two pack guns, a pioneer a sniper, and that 251 half track. We'll have to see what he spends the rest of his fuel on. Um, has he gone to escalate battle phase two? He has not. So he might be uh, planning to rely on the Stug three ours assault gun and then hold on until the 13 command point limit to get the tiger. See if that's the case. These pioneers, they shouldn't be able to displace these tommies. 
but they're just going to annoy them quite a lot. Stocks of better grenades are being ah. made available to the infantry. So here's uh, here's the Stug. So this is the House of E. So this is the short-barreled Stug with the HE rounds, rather than the uh, uh, armor-piercing rounds which the regular Stug has. But a potent unit nonetheless, and one that I really like. It's cheap cost, weighing in at just 200 manpower, 75 fuel, and 8 pop cap. Means that actually you can call it in without thinking too much, um, and uh, it, it's cheap and cheerful, and it also vets up really quickly. Uh, so anyway, grenadiers here going to be whittled down by the Tommies at range. These Tommies just want to make sure that they're actually in the cover. There we go, put to the top of it. Sniper coming in here. He's going to start poking the Tommies down. Ow, there we go. He must be nearly three star vet. The team probably has one or two more shots to get that. 251 half track could really use. I'd love it if you just took it around these tree line here, come around here. Position it here so you can trouble. reinforce these Trying squads. But the Stug is here, and that's going to start flumping this Vickers team. They've been doing quite well. If we look at the top left and top right, we can see that um, this is often the case, I think. When I watch the UK forces, they're outnumbered even against uh, the relatively elite Vermac team a lot of the time. And uh, I guess I guess this is because their, their squads and the re reinforcing just cost so much. In a way, I totally get it. Wow, hang on a second. These Tommies have done really well. The income of OMG Pop is like zero because he's literally totally cut off he needs to sort this out that's issues that is issues that is that's really good work from quinn i mean look at this income plus four fuel for the vermax plus 29 for the ukf good times and uh some kind of uh ability on the map there was being used around here not actually sure what that was uh, i think pop needs to reinforce these squads is he doing so yeah he needs to reinforce these grenadiers too i'd feel much better if he did so Sending back uh, the Stug, this is a decent choice. Tommies actually don't have, until they get Piat launchers, don't have anything that can um, sort of trouble a vehicle, really. And the Pat Gun is also going to be sent back here to recapture the point, so that's reasonable, and that will uh, reconnect his supply. He needs to just reinforce these Grenadiers. That. Is the Major going to get a shot up into these guys? Oh, he does, but he misses. And... Uh, sip on my tea here. <coughs> ah, that seems like the uh, six pounder gun. Gonna get some good hits onto that stug and force it back. Where is it actually firing from? Ah, see, it's firing from just here, so yeah. Pretty cool. Got some pioneers on hand though to repair it almost in situ. Zimbabwe makes it up to three stars with 33 headshots to his name. Pretty impressive tally. And uh, OMG Pop is now uh, re sort of back in supply, so his fuel income comes back up to 20. Still lower though. And this Tommy squad's going to slow down that fuel income a lot more. So I have to say, for a player who's playing from behind, playing from a deficit, uh, Quinn Scruffy is doing real good work. I really like it. This three star Vickers team now, uh, so what do they get a three star? Improves burst control and accuracy. Wow, and getting a squad wipe just straight away. This Vickers is doing business now, it's really cool. Also, building the three-inch mortar emplacement well within his own base, which is a really good response to the fact that he's basically being besieged, and that's going to make life really difficult for uh, hat guns, weapon teams, and I imagine. Oh dear me, these grenadiers! Oh, that is dangerous territory for that grenadier. He needs to get out. Yeah, I imagine that the three-inch mortars can probably even hurt the stug. Um, so yeah, time will tell on that one, but we'll see. And look, if you look at the minimap, this immediately forced the displacement of all these units. The completion of this mortar. Uh, emplacement has given him has given him some breathing room here, and this is really good because this is a situation that looked terrible for him just two minutes ago. It's already looking Enemy slightly better. Point. Uh, the fuel for OMG Pop really low. He pulls in another Stug, but it's still very low, and that's that's really just because Quinn's been so good at cutting off fuel points, um, like cutting off entire sectors with cunning placement of Tommies around the map. Quinn having now researched the five-man squad Enemy upgrade. Let's see, does he have Tech Three yet? Points. He doesn't have Tech Three yet, so he's still holding on. Maybe he's actually just uh, decided not to get that, and he's going to wait for the uh, Ava to arrive. The Ava, a very powerful unit at the moment, almost a storm tiger that doesn't have to sit still and reload for a minute. Uh, it's uh, I checked the uh, the uh, um, what do you call it the change log on the uh, forums, and the Ava is actually sadly due for a heavy nerf very soon. Uh, oh wow, this Vickers, Vickers is just brutal. Oh. Uh, yeah. So the Ava's in for, in for a heavy nerf soon, it's going to get a damage and health reduction. Seems fair though, I mean I've used the Ava in a few games and oh my goodness does it seem painful. I mean it still one hits most tanks, even, I've just, you know, Panzer Fours, no worries. It, it gives infantry in a large radius and you can you can totally move it and re reload it. And once you get it to Veteran C1, which is not super hard, that reload time is pretty rapid. So, anyway, 
love to see these Tommies grab this point here because if there's one thing which uh, uh, Pop has managed to capitalize on during this last phase of dominant play, it is the scoreline. He's now ahead by 161 tickets. So um, it would be nice if uh, Quinn could get on top of that. And another. Uh, so I'm, I don't quite know what this big orange overrun. radius means on the on the mini map, but uh, anyway. Quinn now, forces rejuvenated and coming out for a decent offensive across the map, and this is quite exciting. Um, I'd love to see him get that Vickers into this building and use its extended range or something, that would be quite cool. What is this Stug doing? That seems like a really um, under-supported and quite far forward Stug. Does he realise? There's a six-pounder moving into position to it off. Ooh, I don't like this. Ooh, I imagine the six-pounder, if it's positioned well, will be able to ping it down. Oh, but it's not. It is not positioned well, and Pop is probably going to sneak that Stug out. Oh, that is assuming it doesn't stop to start turning in the middle of the Oh dear me. Oh dear me. Uh, oh, that's a Stug in jeopardy. I think he's going to get it out. But, oh, that was close. Scuffle on the left flank. A couple of Tommies here getting picked up by uh, a squad of Grenadiers and Zemija, who has still not been healed. Wow. Zemija now up to 39 headshots and doing work. I'd love him to just to push this stug forward to about here, giving a much better arc that would allow the stug to command this sort of area just here, which is quite an important zone. Could bring the sniper forward to here to provide line of sight for that as a battle on the right flank is unfolding. Tommy's making a push for this uh, pack gun. I did hear that their uh, grenade package, yes, it has been researched, so that could be an option if they manage to get close to an unattended weapon team. Uh, although uh, this weapon team are far from unattended, pop and moving on out. Uh, why is this guy burninating? What did I miss? Well, wow, he just spontaneously combusted in the middle of a battle, always inconvenient. What on earth caused him to set fire? I'm so confused. Oh well. Uh, that'll be an interesting one to watch back on this video later. Um, the brain carrier, the command vehicle, is going to move on out. The Major spots it and falls back. The pack is going to get into position. Oh, I like this. It's a fantastic position. And you have to think that's probably a dead brain carrier. No, it's going to get into the fog of war and escape. The pack gun's going to push forward though. And uh, how much fuel are we up to now for the Wormack player? 96, so not that much. S certainly not enough to get a Tiger on time. He's half a command point away from being able to call that in. And uh, he really needs to make sure... Okay, so he does hold one of the fuel points, not the other. So his fuel income is respectable. Both players tied at 23, in fact. Uh, oh, it seems... Anti-building flame mortar support was used at some point. Missed that, sorry. Um, Maybe that was somehow what caused that guy to burn to death, but I'm pretty sure I didn't see any flame water support going on. Anyway. Um. Oh, this sniper is stressing me out. Please just heal him. Please. Build a medical bunker in your base. Just like uh, uh, Anyway. Fourth Grenadier squad coming out to replace the one which was lost, and uh, seems that four Grenadiers is the, uh, the amount at which OMG Pop feels comfortable. Comfortable supply lead for him at 81 over the 50 of his opponent, but the Brit force is plucky and quite punchy, so <coughs> still having difficulty taking uh, taking a fight, as it were. And really, not particularly aiming to. I mean, look at look at the um, look at the disbursement of forces for uh, OMG Pop across the map. This is a guy who has mixed arms, combined arms forces across the map, ready to take on any kind of threat. So uh, possibly the correct response for Quinn is to bunch his forces together and punch through one or the other flank. But I suppose then he ris runs the risk of getting flanked and uh, attacked from behind by the forces of the Vermac forces on the, uh, on the flank that weren't engaged. So anyway, time will tell. We'll see what happens. Piat launcher is now equipped, so the weapon racks have been uh, researched. That was probably some time ago. But, uh, yeah, uh, so the Piat's a moderate, moderate anti-tank platform. Enemy really only any good against um, someone who's not paying attention to their armor. Bren gun coming onto these Tommies, and a grenade's going to come into this building. The Grenadiers, oh, that was a good dodge there from OMG Pop. Totally, his awareness there, bang on for that grenade. As the Vermac force is pushing across the middle map and uh, the left-hand side of the map, securing all the resources they can. What was equal fuel uh, resources is now 26 for 13 in favour of the Vermac. That Tiger tank available for calling now does cost 230 fuel, so about 80, about 77 fuel away from that, 76, 75 fuel away from that now. So, uh, yeah, I uh, would like to see, um, would 
like to see the Tiger come in, and that is undoubtedly what he's saving for. In fact, if we have a look at the base, he still hasn't escalated to Battle Phase 2. So yeah, that's, that's definitely what he's going to do. Another grenade, I imagine, coming out of these Tommies. Here we go. Let's see if OMG Pop has the awareness to dodge it a second time. Oh, he does! Jeez, that was such a clutch dodge. Loving it. But he does lose the building, and with that, he'll have to fall back those, uh, those grenadiers. Meanwhile, on the, on the left flank, a uh, squad of Tommies in heavy cover being plinked out by a Stug. They're going to get out of there, rightfully so. Looks like they need some sort of six-pounder or something just to push this side back, I think. Uh, where is the six pounder for Quinn at the moment? Blah, 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 blah. Damned enemy is uh, trying to take a point from us. Uh, it's in a decent position, but a little exposed. These grenadiers are going to be able to push it back. The stug, though, that should be a dead stug. One more round out of this uh, anti tank gun. And there's the hit. So finally, a bit of a fuel swing at last for Quinn, able to deal with one of the stugs. We're losing a capture point. Uh, only 40 fuel now needed, so that's a, a little, that's like a minute, a minute and a quarter. Approximately 75 seconds time, he'll have that. He has the manpower, so clearly lining it up quite well. OMG Pop, uh, I've got to say, he just seems like quite a slick player. You know, he's like, he's on top of his, his awareness, his composition is good. This is clearly a build he's happy using. Oh, no, a major. He did heal the major, <laughs> only, only to have him run out into the Spickers, which is just, oh, just brutalizing from this position. I like this, I like it, I like it in the building, it's nice. And, uh, anyway, taking command of the right flank actually is Quinn. Now let's have a look at the scoreline. He is trailing by about 241, 243 tickets now. And um, that is quite a deficit. He's still got some time to play with, 215 still to go. And by capturing this right hand command point, that will buy him some more time still. But he's still bleeding out at a rate of one ticket per tick. So. Um, He's going to want to. It's going to want to take care of this. this stug on the left flank is actually a little bit isolated and unsupported. No British units to take care and uh, take advantage of that fact. But, uh, so it's probably okay. Medical bunker here being deployed in a good position. I like this. Three squads of LMG grenadiers. Is this the same 251 that's going to arrive the whole game? You know, I think it is. And that, that to me, is the mark of a truly good Vermac player. Somebody who is not afraid to use half-tracks and also keeps them alive for long phases of gameplay. Um, the 251 half-track, used correctly, I think, is the difference between uh, a Vermac player who is, like, totally dangerous and able to put on really intense pressure across the map and one who's merely able to use his units uh, to the best of their ability to play and pull back. It, like, it, it turns the Vermac army from uh, from being just good to being kind of like a relentless killing game which uh, enables you to like pressure and move right back to the base kind of thing. So anyway, like I say, 251 half-track here, um, being used to good effect by OMG Pop, who, as I was saying earlier, seems like quite a slick player and definitely seems on top of this game. He has the fuel for the Tiger, I wonder if he'll call that in. Does he not have the manpower? Oh, he doesn't have the unit cap. Ah, he needs to sacrifice something. Maybe a pack gun. Maybe he can just grab a pack gun and send it in. Oh dear, the 251 getting piatted up here. He's going to try and get out. And does. The Major coming in to uh, cap off some dudes. The Major has been joined by the Major, the Zvitten Major, the second Major or something. I don't know. Don't really know how the hierarchy goes with snipers. Grenadiers reporting objective capture. <coughs> And uh, marshalling the right flank, marshalling the victory points again is OMG. I, I Honestly, I just think he wants to throw this pack gun into his enemy's lines, grab a tiger and force the DD. TBH. That's what I would do. Totes my loats. Um, but hey, if he's enjoying the battle and he doesn't want to sacrifice the lives of his uh, brave Deutsche soldiers, then I can understand that too. Bit of a push on the left flank here from Quinn, who finds himself a little bit uh, beleaguered at the moment. The central victory point is going to be taken back, and that means Quinn's going to be dying out at a rate of three per tick. And if we watch this 190, 187, that's a pretty fast clock. I think Quinn's probably got one last good push in him, and because uh, he needs to rearm, re reload these forces, that's going to drain him down to about the 150 mark, maybe ish, before the next battle starts. And then after that, he's got to he's got to take and hold kind of two of the victory points to to stay in this. Um, so, uh, fighting to the end though, um, and there's, there's no sense GGing at this time, this battle's far from over, but Quinn definitely at the, in the deficit position. It for the fatherland. And that Tiger insurance policy is just looming. Oh my goodness, the fuel rate here pretty much, like as near as makes no difference, 40 per minute. I mean, oh, that is intimidating to the 13 of the British player. And let's see, has, it, has he gone for any tech? He has, he has, he has. And he's researched the anvil, and he's got a Churchill. 
Fantastic stuff. So this could be what Quinn needs to make this to make the difference with this next push. Churchill is uh, a really good, really good tank. Um, it says that the gun is good against medium and soft targets, but honestly, I've seen it be pretty good against some heavier targets as well. Certainly, it's more than enough to seal Panzer fours or not. And I've seen it do decent work against a Panther. No, it's not the kind of unit you want to 1v1 a Panther, but um, yeah, it can definitely chip in uh, to an armor fight against heavier targets. Of course, now a Tiger tank will probably have this thing for breakfast, and that's what we see arriving. Uh, needs to repair his 251, actually. His 251. As the Churchill reveals itself, using the infantry smoke ability, you know, does this cost munitions? Yes, it costs 30. And the British player doesn't have that much in the way of munitions, so he's going to be quite sparing for this. Uh, I love the Somerset accent from the ET Dubs, just going to say, as a, as a man from who kind of is a, around that location in Britain, the Somerset accent is it's just fun to see. And here comes the Tiger right at the flank. The Aegis is going to want to get out of there. Actually, the 6-pounder position quite nicely in the turret. He's not got target vehicle mode initialized. In fact, that's been taken out for some reason. I forgot about that. And that's a Tiger that's kind of not going to take that fight. The Ava has a ton of health. And the six pounder's in a great position. The Tiger gets forced back. And I think Quinn's going to secure the right flank. Now, if he can convert this to... If he can push his forces over and grab the middle bridge as well, this is far from over. I mean, he still hasn't broken out of the deficit position. I wouldn't say he's at the lead or anything, but that was a good swing. That was a good turnaround there for the British forces. Saver needs repairing, of course. Sorry, not Ava. This Churchill needs repairing. Um, and he needs to grab this victory point, like, chop, 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 chop. And uh, also wants to grab... Uh, he needs to spread his forces. Oh, and an unlucky squad wipe there as these grenadiers come in. I think once they get to one star veteran, the yeah, the crew can start pop out and start attacking, which is awesome. That's 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 really good stuff. Oh, is that a pack gun? Pack gun is just doing work against this Churchill. One nice thing about the Churchill is uh, they have a lot of health. So um, you see them take hits from things, which kind of make you wince. And then you look at their HP bar, and yeah, they're still fine. Kind of means that they also take a very long time to repair, though. Although, if he, uh, if he upgrades... Oh no, all of his Royal Engineers, they just got squad wiped. Our capture point. They're trying to take if you upgrade it. your Royal Engineers anyway, so the Heavy Engineer version, you can do good work. But I think I think the, the final wind has fallen out of the sails here for Quinn. He's going to lose this victory point, and he doesn't seem to be in a position to take any more. And that leaves him with about 21 ticks worth of time. And I think that will be uh, enough for... OMG popped to bleed him out of score. A capture point is being overrun. Now with just 19 ticks worth of time remaining. I don't know. I don't know what the play is. I'm struggling. I'm racking my brains. He needs to obviously he needs to fall back, reinforce, rearm all of his squads. No need for doing. panic, but we've only got 50 points left. And then he's gonna push. Okay, I like the left actually. Yeah, push the left. I think if you go for the left and go for the bridge, uh, it's, it's gonna be tight. I still don't think he has enough time, I still don't think he has enough forces. Using the vehicle repair on the uh, on the Churchill there, that's pretty cool. This is a great ability actually, vehicle crew repairs. It smokes up all of your damaged vehicles and starts the repairing, and that's like all your vehicles on the map, so... Yeah, okay, in this case it only repaired the Churchill, but sometimes if you, if you take a fight and you have a few, like, you know, you have a semi-wounded Cromwell, a Comet, and like, you know, I don't know, like one other vehicle, and then you use that ability, you can keep the pressure on following up that fight and maybe catch your opponent whilst they're repairing their own vehicles, because they obviously have to find some pioneers, some guys capable of repairing and start repairing them, and it takes quite a while. Um, so this is Stug now, and then on the left bank, it's doing some work, and the Ava's going to come out, and that should force it away. Sorry, not the Ava, the Churchill. Ooh, good hit there. We're down to our last ten points. But there's no way he can secure two victory points before he ticks out, and I'm afraid that then is GG for Quinn. A good battle there. Look how much a, a hit from a Tiger did to this, to this Churchill. That thing's got health for days. Loving it. Anyway, uh, a valiant fight from Quinn. Um, clearly still finding his feet with the UK forces, but demonstrating some decent skill and, and decision making there. Um, I liked the way that, uh, despite uh, Pop having domination through like a large phase of the sort of, I would say, like early game and early mid, using this mortar position uh, that he constructed here, uh, he was able to sort of displace the siege that was around here and, and start making plays again. I mean, a lot of players would have just died there, I think. So that was really cool. And uh, yeah, these mortars made it up to two stars, so that's, that's also pretty cool. Uh, but solid play out of OMG Pop. If I see any more games from him, he's clearly quite a seasoned Vermac player, and it was pretty cool to um, see him make good use of snipers. Um, and, and also, 
uh, like an interesting take on on choosing the mechanized assault doctrine. He didn't call in a single squad of assault grenadiers, not a single one. Even though I think assault grenadiers are not too shabby against Tommies, as I recall, anyway. Um, uh, he didn't even use the mechanized assault group, but he did make good use of the Stug E uh, assault gun. And uh, you know, what? I don't think I saw him use the light artillery barrage either. He probably did, but I didn't see it. Um, which is why perhaps he's floating 544 munitions here at the end of the game. And then um, going for the Tiger there to seal the deal. Um, but confident use of uh, 251 half-tracks, pack guns, all the core units there for the Vermac forces being used. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Liked it. Liked it. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the replay. This is Magpie842 signing out.